Hello everybody, I'm East Coast Pete. This is my show Midrock Crisis. Today we're going to talk about another musician who found some darkness and demons partway through his musical career. But instead of drugs or suicide, he found a completely different way of dealing with it. Of course, I'm talking about Cat Stevens. He was born Stephen Dimitri Georgiou in 1948, a Brit singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist in folk, pop, and rock, and he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2014. He was the youngest child of a Greek Cypriot father and a Swedish mom. The family lived above a restaurant they operated near Piccadilly Circus. Georgiou had an early interest in music, learning piano. At 15, he heard the Beatles, and he, like millions, went out and bought a guitar. He wrote songs immediately. He and his mom moved to Sweden, but came back to England so Giorgio could attend English school. In West End schools, he was often in trouble. He did poorly in everything but art. He thought he'd become a cartoonist. Music won out. He began performing as Steve Adams in 1965. His goal was to be a songwriter. He liked the Kinks, Bob Dylan, Nina Simone, Lead Belly, Muddy Waters, Leo Kotke, Paul Simon, and Ira Gershwin and Leonard Bernstein. In 1965, Georgiou signed a publishing deal with Ardmore and Beechwood. He recorded some demos, including The First Cut is the Deepest. In London coffee houses and pubs, he performed with a band, but decided he preferred to solo. He thought his given name and his stage name were not memorable. He became Cat Stevens, possibly because his girlfriend said he had cat's eyes. Also, people love animals. His first single, I Love My Dog, was a hit. Album Matthew and Son reached number seven in the UK. And pirate radio stations Wonderful Radio London played Cat's records, so he gained in popularity. And in 1967, the album New Masters and the single The First Cut is the Deepest was covered by P.P. P. Arnold and Rod Stewart, James Morrison, and Sheryl Crow. And a cat. Stevens was diagnosed with tuberculosis in 1969. He was nearly dead when he had, was admitted to the hospital. Months of recuperating and a full year's convalescence. He took up meditation, yoga, and metaphysics. He read about world religion and opted for vegetarianism. He also wrote 40 new songs. He would record a skewing orchestration and overproduction. Cat was released from his record contract and he signed a deal with Island Records where he could contractually create his music as he saw fit. Paul Samuel Smith, ex Yardbirds bassist, was Cat's new producer. Cat began work on Mona Bone Jackin a folk rock album. The title was a nickname he gave his penis. Here are the songs. One, Laby Darbonville always thought this was about Tess of the Durbervilles, but it's about Cat's girlfriend. Two, Maybe you're right. This is a sad and happy sci simultaneously kind of song. It's a great turnaround between the verses. Three, pop star. 
It's a comical song about the music biz. It's like a song in a school play. For I think I see the light. Now, I always love this one. Brilliance. It's almost prog. Five, trouble. Always reminds me of Harold's Black Jaguar in that movie, Harold and Maud. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend you do. It's a masterpiece. Six, Monobone Jack On, semi bluesy. It's kind of a goofy song. Seven, I wish, I wish, I wish I knew what makes me me and what makes you you. <laughs> Don't we all? Eight, Katmandu. Makes you want to learn the flute. Go to the other side of the world and find out what's going on over there. High up in the Himalayas. Time. Song's got heart breaking beauty. Ten, fill my eyes. Ed Stevens has a great gift for melody. Lily white with string embellishment. The song's filler. Now, Alan Davies, a session musician experienced with skiffle and folk rock, became Stevens' recording partner and his friend, and they have been side by side since the early 70s. The single Lady Darbonville reached number eight in the UK and cracked the American market, where it went gold. Peter Gabriel played flute on it. T for the Tillerman was Stevens' international breakthrough. Here's the songs. One, Where Do the Children Play? It's a nice song about a difficult subject. Two, Hard-Headed Woman. He can be soft and intense simultaneously. <laughs> Three, Wild World. Great song. Considers breaking up with your loved one. Never easy. For sad Lisa. Yeah, okay, this one is sad. Five, Miles from Nowhere, probably as close to a hard rock song for this version of Cat Stevens. Six, but I might die tonight. It's always a possibility. Seven, Longer Boats. This one could be about the afterlife. Eight, Into White, so fragile like one moment. Nine, On the Road to Find Out, one of his best early songs, Traveling the Life Road. Ten, Father and Son, he plays in a folk style, but his music is not folk. Eleven, T for the Tillerman. This is a hymn, yeah. Songs spoke of everyday situations and problems mixed with a question of spirituality. Island said it was the best album that they had ever released. T for the Tillerman meant, went multi-platinum. Next album nine, in 1971 was Teaser and the Firecat and went to number two in the U.S., Here's the song's Morning Has Broken. This one got a whole lot of radio play. The song is like a UU church service a little. Two, Bitter Blue, my absolute favorite. It's got it through and through. Three, Moon Shadow, dancing in the light of the darkness. Four, Peace Train, serious genius. A song for the ages. Carly Simon and Cat Stevens were linked musically and romantically at this time and both wrote songs for and about each other. Simon's anticipation about Cat was one of these. You know, I remember that song? Anticipation. Uh, 1972 saw Catch Bull at 4 
one of the ten bulls of Zen. That's how this album got its name. The single was Can't Keep It In. And it went gold in only 15 days. Cat Stevens provided nine songs for the soundtrack of Harold and Maud. Two new songs, Don't Be Shy and If You Want to Sing Out, Sing Out plus songs from his other albums, pushed the movie to cult status and brought Stevens an even wider audience. At the end of the 70s, Stevens converted to Islam. He would halt his music career and he would no longer offer his songs to be used in films. This hiatus lasted 20 years. Stevens was concerned that his rock star image was not in harmony with his new beliefs. He was appalled when the media condemned him for supporting a fatwa, which is a death sentence, for novelist Salman Rushdie for his book, The Satanic Verses. The book was not complimentary of Islam. Cat Stevens was expected to go along with the Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran due to his Islamic ideology, although he has returned to his recording career. Performing, he has not come close to equaling his previous success albums Foreigner, Buddha, and the Chocolate Shop, Is It So, and Back to Earth were quite different from his potent folk rock days. Sef Islam, as he now preferred to be called, met and married Fazia Mubarak Ali, and now They have a family with one son and four daughters. The family lives in London, spending part of each year in Dubai. For the record, Youssef condemned the September 11 tragedy. Even so, he was put on a no-fly list and denied entry to the U.S. In 2006, he was taken off the list and admitted to the U.S. without incident. Youssef won a lawsuit against the U.K. media who had written that Youssef was a supporter of terrorism. The U.K. media learned no lesson. They printed that Youssef refused to speak to unveiled women. Also false, also a lawsuit, also a win for Youssef. In 2006, another cup was released and distributed by Polydor in the UK and internationally by Atlantic. It charted, but not in the US. 2009, Road Slinger. To warm you through the night with boots and sand as a single charted in Europe. And then 2014, Tell Him I'm Gone features Richard Thompson. Makes sense. The single was You Are My Sunshine. And I don't think it's You Are My Sunshine. I don't think it's that. 2017, The Laughing Apple was nominated for a Grammy. The album had no singles. Now, do I tell... What I think of Yusef Islam, yeah. He's cool, he's old, he wants his career, okay, good. I will not forget that Mona Bone Jackin is his genitalia. Thanks, Yusef. Is there anyone in, growing up in the 70s that didn't have a Cat Stevens album to play when in your afternoon sitting on the love seat with your lady love 
known she just loves those songs as much as you do. She's a very unique individual, very unique musician, just an amazing person. I wish he appreciated his past the way so many of us do. Can't have everything. Thanks for being with me on Mid-Rock Crisis. Everybody take very good care.